press conference by Minister Kamikawa. It's now start. Please go ahead. I have two announcements to make. The first one, it is exactly 100th day since my assumption of the Office of Foreign Minister. Let me take this opportunity to make some observations. When I was appointed Foreign Minister on September 13th, Prime Minister Kishida asked me to build on the relationship of trust that Japan has built with various countries and to solidly work to promote Japan's diplomacy. Inheriting the accomplishments of my predecessors in Japan's diplomacy, I have been working with a resolve to address important agendas with all of my ability. Over the past 100 days, severe conditions continue in Ukraine. Situations are worsening in the Middle East. To address these and other urgent challenges, I shuttled in and outside of Japan for a total of nine trips. And I also hosted G7 foreign ministers meeting as G7 presidency three times, including telephone conference. In that process, I have met many counterparts and partners from Japan and abroad to build my personal relationships. I have strengthened my connections with various stakeholders, including ambassadors to Japan. The discussions I have had with them will be linked to our diplomatic activities as part of the so-called outreach diplomacy. I truly feel that the key to diplomacy is personal relationships. Next year, there are important elections in many countries. Ukraine, the Middle East, and international situations will be reaching a very important juncture. I, as foreign minister, will respond to the high level of trust and expectations that the international community has on Japan's diplomacy, and I will work to carve out new possibilities for Japan's diplomacy. I will continue to challenge myself. With this 100th day as a trigger, I would also like to make new attempts. For example, strengthening communications, including use of social networks, promotion of regional collaboration for network building, and promotion of WPS by using WPS task force that the ministry contemplates to establish. At this juncture of 100th day, I can no longer say that I am new to the job. I need to brace myself once again, and I will work with a focus on defending Japan's national interests to elevate Japan's presence, listen to the voices of the people, and implement diplomacy that is understood and supported by the people, which is the posture that I have taken since my assumption of office. Uh, next point in the statement. As a part of the efforts to make an outreach-oriented diplomacy, as I mentioned earlier, I have just participated in the luncheon session with a diplomatic corps in Tokyo of the five Nordic countries. Nordic countries are important partners sharing fundamental values and principles. In particular, they are the partners in cooperation on the Arctic, uh, which is my lifelong work, and the leading countries in gender equality, uh, such that they are the top of the list of gender gap index. In today's luncheon, I was able to confirm that Japan and the Nordic countries uh, can cooperate over a broad range of topics, such as those as I mentioned. I was able to reconfirm through today's opinion exchanges that there are great potential for Japan and the Nordic countries for furthering cooperation that needs to be realized going forward. That is all for myself. Thank you. We will now take questions. Please raise your hand, and when you're designated, please come to one of the microphones, state your name and affiliation. Kasada-san from Kyodo News. My name is Kasada from Kyodo News. I have a question about Russia. Russian Foreign Ministry has said that on the 21st, the Japan-US-Australia conducted exercises near Russia in Hokkaido, which is a potential threat to 
the security of Russia, and they have lodged a protest to the Japanese embassy in Russia. How did Japan respond to this? The press release issued by the Russian Foreign Ministry that you pointed out, yes, I am aware of the release. Now, in implementing this exercise, on the 18th of December, Foreign Ministry of Russia did lodge a protest to our embassy in Russia, and in response, our Russian uh, our emb uh, embassy in Russia has responded that this is not acceptable. Next, Igarashi-san from NHK. NHK Igarashi. I'd like to ask about Nippon Steel. Nippon Steel have uh, announced an, that they have reached an agreement with U.S. Steel uh, for acquisitions. And against that, U.S. White House uh, released a statement that uh, uh, Biden administration uh, take this as a worth serious sec security um, a scrutiny and its potential impact uh, on, on national security and the supply chain and so forth. And what is your take as FOMA uh, to uh, receive these comments? And what is your action going forward? As you have asked just now, uh, the National Economic Advisor have released a statement, and we are fully aware of that statement. But uh, this particular matter is involving the corporate management of the specific company, and therefore uh, we rather not to make any comments. At any rate, uh, the U.S.-Japan alliance is becoming uh, the stronger than ever, and Japan and the United States will continue to uh, coordinate and uh, cooperate each other in regard to the maintenance and the comprehensive economic growth um, realization in Indo-Pacific area, a free and open economic order and security areas. Next, Azhari-san from Pan Orient News. Zahari Khaldun, Pan Orient News. Uh, I'm asking about Gaza situation. Japan has called for reforms of the Security Council, UNSC, uh, citing uh, veto power of Russia uh, that uh, undermines international peace and uh, uh, that allowed its aggression against Ukraine. That was uh, in the past few months. Uh, will you apply the same logic toward the American veto against a ceasefire in Gaza? where over 20,000 people, including around 5,000 children and babies, have been slaughtered by the Israeli occupation forces. Thank you. When I assumed the office in September, and since I have been emphasizing consistently the importance of UN Security Council reform at various occasions, from the establishment of the UN, the world has changed dramatically, and we need to have a Security Council that reflects the current world. What you pointed out, the situation in Ukraine as well as in the Middle East, recent international situations, including the veto issue, these have highlighted various problems that the UN has so against this backdrop, the importance of UN Security Council reform is increasing its importance. Various countries' interests are complexly intertwined. So UN Security Council reform is not going to be a simple matter, but Japan will continue to coordinate with various countries to work on this tenaciously. What you have pointed out, local time, December 8th. A draft resolution was put to a vote, which is a proposal made by the UAE, and Japan supported this resolution. However, it's regrettable that it was not adopted as a res resolution at the UN Security Council. At the same time, we need, we need immediate release of hostages. We need improvement in the humanitarian situation, and we need to calm down the situation, and we highly evaluate the diligent diplomatic efforts made by the U.S. in this regard. Now, towards adoption of a new resolution, we need to find an agreement point amongst council members, and we are currently conducting diligent coordination and negotiations to improve the local humanitarian situation. Japan is a member 
of the Council. We need to have UN Security Council fulfill its du duties and appropriately indicate its intentions. We will coordinate with other member states to proactively work on this issue. Thank you very much. That concludes the press conference. Thank you very much.